Hey everyone, so now we are going to work on some of our covers here. So I'm going to pull out one at a time. We'll do this one. I did, or not our covers, but our spines. I did do this spine on my own just because I've never done this technique and I wanted to try it before showing it if I need to do it, but this one don't need that, so I'm not too worried about it. This one I'm going to make one and a half, so cut it one and a half here. And I'm using a sharp blade. If you use sharp blades, be careful with them. Don't cut yourself. And don't cut the wood that you're trying to use as your cutting point. <laughs> so, that should work. And I just take this and I just cut what's already been pre-done. go and I completely wrecked my ruler and I'm just gonna have to buy a new one thank goodness it's tis the season for that school and then this one There we go. Now this one I made one and a half inches. It's just a smidge too long. There we go. And we leave a little bit of a gap in between. And I just tape. There and Again, I'm just taping along, making sure there's a little bit of a gap in between. Pull it up. Fold this. It don't really matter what the look exactly is there as long as you cover it. And I know a lot of people use Tyvek tape to do this. I don't have that, I have packaging tape. So that's what I'm using, this is what I have. I'm not gonna spend extra 
until I run out of this. That's just the way I am. I have too many other things to worry about. So there we go, our first spine made. Or second spine we made, I should say. All right. Now. I like this corner best. So we'll use this corner. Again, uh, and it's at one and a half inches all the way across and then I take it and I try to run it across here if I'm a little off I'm a little off I think and I it so not too worried about that make sure my caps on right away because kids don't need to be getting hold of that and again I'm just cutting across to make sure this is exactly where I want it There we go. Now. We want to add around eight. There we go. That part done. I'm gonna stick my cardboard into my cardboard bin that I have sitting here. Now I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the one is gonna be the baby book or if I'm gonna do the Pinocchio as a baby book I'm not sure yet I haven't really made my decision yet it all depends on how it looks I still haven't so sold my last Pinocchio golden book so it might end up being Pinocchio just for that reason going to say yes or no until I know what I'm doing. And again, I'm just making sure there's a little gap in between. It might be too big of a gap, but you know what? Who cares? It still makes the bend I want it to make, and it ain't going to wreck anything or cause any issues. So if it ends up being a bit bigger than what was expected as long as it ain't too much bigger you should be good and again I just do this flip up this flip this one and voila Got that going. The next part, real quick, like. And again, if there's any crinkles in it, it just adds to the texture to the cloth when you put the cloth on. Not a big deal. 
So there we go. Either way, it makes a good bend here and bends really nice and easy, which is the whole point. So we got that going. Now I'm thinking I want to cover this part first before I add in our papers. So not sure exactly what I'm going to use, but we'll see here. We'll use some of this. And this again is just the inside portion of this. It isn't the outside. It's just to give that inside so you're not like looking at ugliness or the bare bones portion of it. This is some dyed fabric that I did recently so but again I'm just trying to even if I I think I want to cut this shorter just because it's again just to get this bare look there we go and this side's even brighter, even though it's the back side. Alright. But again, you can do very basic spines. You don't have to always do them elaborate. They could look elaborate with you doing something ba basic too, though. If you're very careful on how you do it. You don't have to do much in order to get it to really look good. Now this part definitely needs to be glued down more. And probably the same with the other side, maybe. Nope. Seems to be down pretty good. again I'm just trying to make it so the bones don't really aren't really shown when we get to the putting in the papers I like to put in the papers before I cover this portion I think that's a good idea some people aren't that way but I figured out that that's what works best for me Because they're all at like eight pages or eight inches, we want to make them our pages definitely much shorter. That one's definitely shorter. These are not. These are definitely shorter. But I have figured out when you're doing something like a group like this. Uh, we want them all to be that 
so we're just going to use our handy dandy knife again now I have it at seven and a half all the way across Not sure how well this is working, but I'm trying. Again, I'm trying something definitely new to me. So, that may have been too thick, but again, at least I'm trying. Okay, I'm getting irritated with this whole process, so now I'm just going to take it and I think cut it across here. There we go. And this is also when we're done with our putting in pages, we can make little cutesy stuff with these so that was for me a nice try but I don't really like doing that that way personally it's not my home all right so my extra papers that are plain one side but not plain on the other papers I'm putting in one pile. My plain, plain papers I'm sticking in a pile. These are plain. My definitely not plain, but both sided papers are going to go into a pile here. Some of these, a bunch of these are just cover pages, but still got to go where they belong, right? Okay, both sided, both sided, both sided. All right. Oh. So I got four two-sided pages. I need to have at least two more. Now we got two more pages here. So, all right. Now we're gonna start with one of these, and I'm just gonna go round circle till they're all used.
and yeah, again, some of these are magazine pages, which are fine. It all needs to be mixed and combined anyway, so. Not a big deal. This is going to be two signature one. That's my thought. I kind of want that one to be my middle one, so I'm going to do this. Where can I stick you? Let's stick you here. And no, I don't necessarily have a particular order with this piece today. I'm just kind of randomizing it a little bit. So there we go. We got our two wonderful signatures that definitely have multiple place, places we can have them. Strand one for our signatures. Let's see if we can get another strand. Two. Three. And I'm kind of liberal with it. If you can't tell. I like being liberal with it. I think it helps the whole creative process just a little bit. And I know a lot of people measure out and all that stuff, but honestly, I'm not good at the measuring out a lot, a lot. If you couldn't tell, I make a lot of mistakes when I have to measure. So, I don't normally measure very often when I'm doing this process. But I do try to clip them in. So I'll be right back. I'm just going to grab my clips quick. Here, that's where I can't reach in my desk at the moment. It isn't very reachable. Thought it would be, but it really isn't. happens but <laughs> anyways that's why, where I started doing this now I like these lines because then I can just line it up based off of these lines like if I want it in between two lines it makes it so much easier to line them up when you just have to line them up with the lines right that's how I think of it Makes my life easy and simple. Making sure my lines are lined up.
there we go. Then I just puncture a hole where I think it might be pretty center. And I wiggle it. <laughs> All right, and then I go for a spot that I think is pretty close to dead center between the two groupings there. And I wiggle that. And same thing here, I just go for where I think is pretty even. And because I make it uneven, that's why I do it the way I do. Because when you go to this part, I'm normally very uneven with it. And I, again, I try to hide that. I know I do it. This time I actually think I did it pretty even. But in case I do make it uneven or I don't have a matching like I should, both sides, it makes it so much easier when I can do this. And I stick it so I can see a light and try to find the hole based off of that sometimes. Sometimes I have to look underneath it and I find the hole. normally not this great at doing this so for me to once get this <laughs> somewhat correctly while being on film is like a rarity just so you know this is why I don't normally film myself doing this part I, I get it perfectly fine when I'm off film, but when I'm on film for some reason I have a habit of messing up Angles. So I'm going to. <laughs> I feel like in the mood for just something a little dangly to go in there. So I'm sure there's cute little dangles here. Yeah. One, two. That looks good to me. It just does not want to, it's too frayed there. So let's get that out of the way. And I'll try it. I normally don't like it, but when it's, <laughs> when I'm having this much of a struggle with something as simple as dangles, it's kind of frustrating. All right. And this is actually the first time I've ever added dangles to something like this. I just, I thought dangles would be cute with this book in particular.
it's calling to me. That's what I should say. <laughs> I don't say that very often. Ideas like this calling to me. But again, this is me pushing my limit a little bit here without pushing it too far. Because every book I try to do, even if they're the exact same thing, I want them a little bit different. There. Cute little dangles. So we got this first half in. Now this I'll save for something else. Just because I don't believe in throwing out a piece of string or nothing. Now if it was tinier, yes, but definitely not tiny enough to want to throw away yet. Alright, there we go. Now this one, I want it this end here. I just thought it's such a pretty piece. It goes with a lot of what I like. So look here, see if it's lined up both ways. Getting clipped here. Okay. This side is being clipped. So I want to clip this with this piece. These pieces work good for these higher up pieces here. in there. All right. And again, I just eyeball it and then I push down. <laughs> and that's what I call good. And I do this again the exact same way every time. And it may not be perfect again. I'm that's why I hide the imperfections with this portion is because I know I'm very imperfect with it. And I don't really want to deal with people being mad that it ain't perfect. It's tight. It's just again. I'm not perfect.
All right, let's add dings to this one. Not sure if I'm going to do the same dangles, but I'm still going to have dangles. <laughs> Again, it's just that mode where you say, oh, I just need a dangle. I like that idea. Right there. Do I have any other ones like that? No, only the other one I have is purple. I don't want purple. way too big. Rock. One of my pieces of jewelry fell apart a while ago and it lasted over 10 years so it I mean, when I was really into the jewelry making 10 years ago, that's what I used. But now that I'm older, I'm not really as into the jewelry making, so kind of don't matter to me anymore. <laughs> Sorry to say, but oh, it's too big. I don't need I was hoping. I think I have a smaller needle in here. Let's see. This one's fatter or smaller. No, it's about the same size. Okay. Guess I can't use needles to get into it. find out I just need to cut it at an angle. So good tip for y'all. Don't know why I said y'all, but yeah. Definitely not Southern person. Nothing against Southerners. I'm just not. I was born in Wisconsin, raised in Wisconsin, and that's just the way it is. My parents weren't ones to travel or anything else like that. They never even traveled when they were together. A lot of people tell me it's about choices, but it's also about the people themselves. My parents were never ones to want to travel, nor care about traveling, or anything else like that. They are the types. If it's their choice in the matter, they're homebodies. And then people wonder why I'm a homebody. It's because my both my parents were. They did nothing but work and 
I mean, that's basically it. They worked and stayed at home. Watched movies. I've watched a lot of movies over the years with my parents. And that just ain't working. Uh, what other things could we do? We got these thingies. Free. They're called brass barrel swivels. I have no idea what they're for, but they'll work good for this. So that's all that matters, right? And I'm probably not going to add this. I'm probably just going to tie them up in a bow, the other two, which you don't really need to see. You just need to see the one of the series. So I'm probably going to let you go after this, show you how it turned out. And that was, again, my first time ever doing that, adding dangles to it, but whatever works, right? And again, I, I personally like to do this is make sure the bend is nice in there both ways. Just a sweet way to make sure it's all pretty straightened out. And there we go. So we got our spine done. We got our holes in and our pieces in and our two signatures ready to go. We have dangles on both of our signatures. So now it's time to start filling this one up. But I'm probably going to do a couple other things to the series before or other I'll be finishing up the other two the exact same way and putting the pages in except instead of the dangles I'm just going to tie it in a bow but because I have so many new subscribers I figure okay I probably should do my spines on video instead of not on video but that's how it looks so far I'll be again doing the other two off camera and I'll be leaving these scraps behind because we'll just do a little project with the scraps when I'm done doing all these or getting all the pages in and everything so I hope you enjoyed this video and have a wonderful evening today tonight or have a wonderful day. Bye.